Hi guys, Fujit here, and we're continuing our venture into the worst performing tanks in Blitz. We're now at tier 9, and according to Blitz Stars, this is the worst performing tier 9 light tank, the Batchat 25T AP. But what makes this tank so bad? Now, as I said, according to Blitz Stars, this is the worst performing tier 9 light tank. You can see it there. It has a 49.47% win rate. That is worse than all the other tier 9 light tanks. Not only that, it has the lowest d damage per battle and the lowest kills per battle and the lowest survival rate per battle. So what exactly is going on with this little bat chat? Why is the player base really struggling in it? Well, we're going to have a deep dive in this little masterclass to see if we can get the player base a little bit better at playing the Bat Chat 25T AP. First thing we need to know is the armor profile of this tank. I mean, it's a light tank. Its armor profile isn't going to be that great. So we need to switch over into Armor Inspector and have a look to see what's going on with this tank fully. Jumping into Armor Inspector, this is what our little tier 9 bat chat looks like when facing off against a tier 9 German Heavy, in this case the E75, with its standard ammunition. Okay, I fully admit this bat chat will face off against tier 8 and tier 10s, but I picked tier 9 for a reason. That's its own tier. Immediately you can see where some of the problems are with the bat chat. It has no armor. And this is where a lot of people are struggling because two things. One, it's got no armor. And secondly, it's got a lot of speed and mobility. And thirdly, it is an auto loader. So this is not one of the easiest tanks to play. Now, as you can see, just as I turn the, the tank around, I mean, this thing, you will get a couple of bounces on those reddish areas as you sort of zip around, but nine times out of 10, this thing is just wide open and it's incredibly susceptible to HE. Therein lies some of your problems because players are playing this tank. It's also thinking that their speed mobility and their auto loader is gonna get them out of trouble. And that is very, very rarely the case. For the good players, yes, it will. You know, because the good players know that the speed will get you into trouble, but at the same time, it will get you out of trouble. But the thing that the good players know is that you don't get yourself into trouble until you have fully loaded that magazine. And that's where a lot of the newer, less experienced players really struggle in this tank. They don't load the magazine fully. They go hurtling onto the front line, and before they know it, they are in a world of pain. So what can we do to make this tank slightly better and improve our chances? Well, before we get into the equipment and the consumables and the provisions, let's jump back into the garage and let's have a look at the parameters of this tank. And let's try and identify where the player base is struggling in this particular tank. We're back in the garage now and we're now looking at the overall parameters of this tank. Now, as you can see, hit point, it doesn't have that many, 1,696. Armor, wow, as I showed you with Armor Inspector, it's pretty, pretty non-existent. On the turret, 50. Frontally, on the hull, 60. That's not brilliant, but it's okay. Then we get there is a slight slope upon that hull. Sides, 50. Rear, 50. That's the turret. Sides of the hull and the rear of the hull, 40 and 35, respectively. This tank is paper thin. The reason it's paper thin, it's a light tank. It's meant to be paper thin. Without that thin armor, this thing can't roll around the battlefield as quickly as it would like to. Moving down, you can see that the view range, admittedly, I'm probably running it with the optics, etc., etc. It's almost 300. That's not too bad. Camo and concealment, when stationary, 52%, moving 52%, and firing 5%. It is very exposed when it's firing, but 52% stationary and moving isn't that bad. DPM, well, it's 2,590 per minute. That is okay. It's a light tank. It's not. It's got very nice DPM. Magazine reload time, and this is where a lot of people become unstuck. It's almost 16 seconds. The shower reload time, that's the interclip. 
So you fire one shell, it then takes another 2.8 seconds to load the second shell. Now, considering that some of the tanks like the FV4005 in tier 10 have a 2.5 interclip reload, that isn't that bad, but it's a little bit lengthy when you really want to get those shells going down that range very quickly. Clearly, there's three shells in the magazine. Penetration, well, you've got 244 with your standard AP, 276 with your APCR, 55 with your HE. Damage, why well, are you doing 310 on your AP? That's per shell, that's not per three shells. You're doing 260 on the APCR and 350 on your HE. These are not bad parameters. Aim time, 3.3 seconds. Is a little bit long for this little light tank, but it's manageable, to be perfectly honest with you. Dispersion is 0 0.330. Quite a lot, but it's a light tank. You shouldn't be, you know, you're not going to be farming so much from the back. Not really. Gun depression, six degrees. It is rear mounted, so you've got terrible gun depression on this thing. Uh, but the shining glory is this top speed 65 going forwards, 20 going backwards, with an average speed of 39. It's got pretty nice terrain crossing capability as well 136 percent on the road 109 percent on the ground and 78 percent in the water so parameter wise it's actually not that bad it's it's quite a nice little bundle let's jump into the equipment now and let's have a look to see what equipment you can possibly load up to give yourselves a little bit better sort of statistics coming into this thing. Now, I load this with calibrated shells. Why? Because it will face tier 10s. Generally, it doesn't have a problem with tier 8s. Sometimes it doesn't have a problem with some of the tier 9s. But when it gets to tier 10 tanks, it does start to struggle. Now look, I could load it, I could load it with the ventilator, okay? That's gonna give me a better view range, gives me better DPM. I don't think I need better DPM. I don't think I need a better reload time. I think I need calibrated shells just in case I'm coming across those big tier 10s. I've then got the defense system. Why? Because I always have the defense system because I find it better than the improved modules. Just, just my way of thinking. I've then got it with improved optics. It's a light tank. I need it to have that view range. No point me loading it with a supercharge, so I stick in an enhanced gun laying device, bringing that reload time down. Then move across. Again, I've got the hit points on this one. Why? 4% of nothing on the armor overall is still nothing. So why would I put enhanced armor? That only gives me 4%. 4% of nothing is, as I said, still nothing. So I'm using the improved assembly, which gives me 96 additional hit points. It's not much, I agree, but it's better than a kick in the teeth. I'm then using the engine accelerator. Okay, it only gives me one additional speed going forwards, however, but but it gives me better turn rate, better engine power. Something I think I, I, I like. I've then got the vertical stab just to reduce that end time. There's no point in me having, you know, the refined gun to reduce its dispersion. What's the point? And I then got obviously a toolbox and the high-end consumables. Looking at the consumables, well, Wargaming have recently added this one, the shell reload boost. I am running it with that at the moment, just to bring down that interclip when I need it. I then got the multi-purpose restoration pack and the repair kit, double repair kit, because this thing does get tracked quite a lot. Moving into your provisions, it's a bat chat, okay? It is totally susceptible to HE. Spall liner is the way to go, guys. You need to load a spall liner on this tank because every man and his dog is going to be spamming HE towards you. This spall liner will reduce the impact of that by 20%, and it is a must. I see so many people driving out in these soft skin HE magnetic vehicles, be it the Bat Chat or say, the waffle tractor or the gorilla not using a spore liner you are just mad use the spore liner i've then got the coffee and croissants that brings my view range up even more the dpm gets better etc etc makes my crew work that extra little bit harder and then i'm using the protective kit because why not i want protection from my modules and all that sort of stuff so that's why i've got that 
Moving on to my actual ammunition loadout. Well, my AP is the main ammunition, 26 of those. APCR 16 and my HE only six. Why only six? Look, this thing, okay, doesn't have the best HE penetration. So why bother? You know, I'm gonna get better damage and better penetration out of my AP. So that's why I've got more AP. And that's just the way I look at it. I mean, you may look at it completely differently. And you've got to tinker with these loadouts for you in, in, in what's good for you. Anyway, enough chatter about what the tanks, provisions, etc., are. Let's jump into a game and let's see, wow, how we can effectively play this little bat chat. Here we go on Yukon in a tier nine, tier 10 game. Something that the bat chat will generally face a lot of. I mean, most of the games I play are tier nine, tier 10 in this thing. I, very occasionally do I get to bottom, do I get up to it where it's a tier nine, tier eight game. And already you can see that it's struggling to pen that object. And that's one of the problems when you face these tier tens. No point in me even trying it. I'm gonna back away because if that object gets one into me, especially a HE, then it's gonna really hurt a lot. I'm gonna reload that magazine, which is over 20 seconds, as I said. And hopefully we will be able to relocate here because there's no point us trying to face off against those tanks. We're gonna spin around and use the mobility. And this is what you need to consider when playing a bat chat, uh, especially this tier nine bat chat. You've got to keep mobile, okay? You've got to keep mobile at, at every opportunity because if you're not mobile, then the tanks are just gonna have a field day with you. Now, I'm gonna take on this E100. I'm gonna try and put this one final shell out of my magazine into him, hopefully, maybe, no, I'm gonna reload. He's backing away. With him backing away, that creates a problem for me. And the problem that I've got is, if I poke out, he will just put an HE round into me. So I've got to try and sucker him. And I've got to try and land the full magazine. Now he's gonna push on me, I'm gonna try and track him. There we go. That will give me enough. He fires blindly. That was a bit of a snapshot by him. That's gonna allow me to push down again. Can I track him again? Yes, I can. Can I get the third one in? No, not like that, because it doesn't have the gun depression, but I track him a third time, and I'm gonna pull away behind the rock. That is meaning one of two things. I am Either he's gotta push me down, you know, I've got the rock here for safety. He's gotta push me one way or the other. I'm gonna reload. Hopefully, he's gonna make a mistake. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the mobility of the bat chat. There he goes, he fires. That allows me to push around again. Can I track him? No. Can I track him this time? Because I need to track him. Yes, I do. And I tracked him. And now from the rock, I'm now in the building's cover. Again, this is helping me stay protected from this E100. Admittedly, I've only knocked out 1500 damage, but I'm taking on a big E100 here. So I've got to be careful. I see that his guns turn the other way. The, oh, that's a lucky bounce from me. He, he throws an HE at me there, I think. But that was a very lucky bounce. Now I can just take him down. And the bat chat does struggle with its gun depression, as you see. I haven't lost my hit points here. I'm worried about the E100. I'm not gonna face him off. I'm gonna get out of there. But the Sheridan, I didn't realize he was loaded. He puts a big roll into me. I'm gonna push down on him now, try and take him out if I can. Just wait for that reload time. Doesn't matter if I waste the first shot, I will get him on the second. And we do 2,173 damage. We take only one tank out but we were relatively effective in that game. We were constantly on the move and we were baiting the enemy. We were turning around those, uh, those rocks in those buildings, not giving the E100 the opportunity. We had a bit, of a, a bit of a bad shot taken into us there and we got a little bit lucky with the E100 bouncing us, but, but I enjoyed that. That was a good game. It may only be a third class, but it was still a good game. Let's jump into another replay and let's have a look at the bat chat a little bit more. This time we are on New Bay and I'm gonna take the bat chat up to the ramps. Now look, it doesn't have the gun depression and we've gotta be careful. We're gonna go up here and already there's a bat chat. That's the tier 10 bat chat. So we're gonna take a defensive position. We haven't been spotted yet. Hopefully one of them is gonna push us. Um, then again, maybe not. 
So we're gonna look, push a little bit out, see if we can get some shots over onto this Emil too. No, we can't, but then there's an AMX. We can at least tag him. We break his tracks. Can we get another one into him? Yes, we can, but it bounces. Maybe third time's a charm, and we take him down. So that's pretty successful. We've taken out one of their dangerous tanks. The rest of their tanks are going below us. We can't do anything about that. I'm not gonna drop down there. So I'm looking around the map, seeing where my long-suffering tomb mate Ephelump is, and we're deciding that maybe we should push down there, either onto the E100 or the Type 71. Now the E100 is pretty isolated, and I can see that we've got some tanks around there, what with the Emil II. So I'm gonna help push up on the E100, there we go, one shot in. Can we get another into the bottom plate? Yes, we can. Maybe a third one, if the Emil, we break his tracks. So again, we stay mobile. And this is the thing about the back chat, guys, you've got to stay mobile. Mobility is the key. Admittedly, we've only done, it's, you know, 1,100 damage, but we have given a hard time to the AMX, he's gone, and the E100. The E100 manages to get around the corner, which completely took me by surprise, but we can get around and probably smack him on the back. Yeah, does it, it bounces. Maybe again, the Emil is just getting in the way slightly. Third time, there we go. 1,696 damage, and we've taken two kills. That's not bad. And again, you stay mobile at all times. Staying mobile is the key to this tank. If you just sit in the open, um, you're just gonna get absolutely wrecked. Staying mobile is a really, really good thing to do in this tank. Believe me, you know, it's just the way it is. And we bounced that one there, but it's not, to, not a problem. I mean, can we finish him off? Get around the side and boom, down he goes. Just shy of 2,000, we take three kills, we don't lose any hit points, and that's quite nice. Do we get some uh, assistance damage there? I think we do a little bit, yes, we do. We get 1,717, that gives us the second class, and that is why I like this little tier nine bat chat. And the reason why it's got such a bad win rate and why people are struggling in it is purely because they are not staying mobile they are like rushing in and then trying to brawl which you cannot do in a bat chat and that's where people are coming on stuck so you've got to be a little bit careful with this tank it's not a nasty tank it's certainly not a difficult tank not really not once you know it Yes, if you're new to these type of tanks, of course it's difficult. I mean, you're in tier nine now, and tier nine is not meant to be easy. I actually like the bat chat, the little tier nine bat chat, but then again, I like the tier 10 bat chat as well. And I generally find that the best way to play it is, as I said, stay mobile. Don't, don't hang around, and certainly don't brawl in it. And this is where a lot of the player base, as I say, is coming on stuck. You can have fun in this tank. Once you get used to it, it's not the easiest tank, I'm not gonna lie. It's not that simple to play because it has got no armor. It has got an auto loader, which means it's got a long reload. But in the right hand and played correctly, you can be very effective in this tank. I mean, I love this tank. I think it's one of the best light tanks. I actually get on better with this tank than some of the other light tanks in tier nine. And it, most definitely, this is the best light tank in my arsenal in tier 10, because I really struggle with the likes of the T100LT, whereas this, it suits me better. It, it, it forces me to lower the pace of the game when I'm doing that very long reload. And that's the trick, guys. You've just got to remember that it does have a long reload. And as long as you are able to sort of get yourself into safety because of that long reload, you will have a whale of a time in this thing because it, it is a good tank, despite the performance issues that it has according to Blitz Styles. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been my masterclass on the Backchat 25 TAP. The tier nine French light tank, apparently the worst performing tier nine light in the game currently. By all means, comment and everything below because I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this one. And until the next time, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about. Having fun and being 
ครับ